Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And uh, I thought I would just show you because I've had a few questions like what do I need to set up doing this sort of painting? Because it looks like fun. I want to have a go at it. <laughs> what do I need? And uh, like I said in a couple of other videos I haven't said recently, I don't think, is um, I use a few brushes these are uh, Daily Rowney graduate flat wash brushes. Um, so you just need a few. I go for a big size, one inch, a half inch, and then these Cotman ones, smaller ones. Um, I find it pretty good. They work for me. I mean, there are better brushes out there uh, if you want to really splurge out on artist materials. I mean, they're also good. Um, these are the paints I tend to use. They're the easiest ones for me to get. Uh, the Windsor and Newton. I tend to use the Cotman watercolour paint because it's uh, a bit cheaper. <laughs> and uh, I use the Windsor and Newton Designer Gouache White. I find that the best. I've tried other ones and uh, so far this has been the best for me. And, uh, and yeah, <laughs> you can get um, gouache as well in the colours that you could use. I mean, it's up to you whether you do it using white gouache to mix with your watercolour, which makes your watercolour a bit more opaque, or you go straight in with the gouache. It's really up to you. Sometimes I find the highlights, or if I want a bit more colour, I'll go straight with the gouache, but if I want it to be a bit faint, then I'll go with the watercolour. But the more white you add into the watercolour, the more opaque it gets. That's, it's just the thing to remember. So you can get these books. They, they seem to sell them in craft places. It's for scrapbooking and uh, people make scrapbooks or photo albums with them and uh, they come with, they usually have a ribbon <laughs> and uh, and yeah you get, you get your page and and you just, there's a sketch I did a hand, the, 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 the hand um, yeah so you can use those, landscape or portrait, and then do your painting on it. And the card that comes in isn't too bad. It doesn't um, cockle too much. So I find it all right. And, uh, and that's basically all you need. And then you need something for water. I tend to use a fruit bowl because it's quite wide and... Uh, that's just what I use. <laughs> you don't have to use a fruit bowl. You could use anything, really. Some people use those plastic uh, trays that you roll uh, paint paint roller on because uh, then you can have your brushes at an angle so you don't squash your brushes. Because that, that's a problem. If you have your brush in water straight down, your brush can get squashed and then uh, it becomes unusable unless you do the trick with the milk where you uh, dip your brush in milk and then wrap it in paper really tight to get your, your, your end back. Yeah, and then the other thing you need while we're going on things we need <laughs> is some sort of a palette. Now, I'm using a plate, um, but there are plenty of different palettes out there. But if you don't want to buy a palette, and you're painting inside a plate is really good a ceramic plate because you can just wipe it and uh, when after you've done a painting say you wanted to clear the middle bit again and, and a dinner plate gives you a good space in the middle but say you wanted to do a uh, you've done a, a nice uh, wintery scene and then tomorrow you was like ah oh, well I don't want to do a wintry scene I've got all this paint on so I just run it 
over some cold I get some cold water over the top run it under the tap and just quickly wash it all off and uh, and then you can do the same just sort of wash over your paints and then you've got your paint your palette all ready to go again the next day or uh, for the next painting just to clean your colors again and I also have a tea towel <laughs> There we go, there's a tea towel here. And uh, I put my plate on it, because I found, you know, you get water when you're washing your plate. And and also, I uh, use it to, when in between painting, I just put my plate down. So I dipped my brush in some water, and I'm like, oh no, my uh, I don't want it to be too wet. So I've cleaned my brush, and then, I'll go like this to dry it a little bit and then I'll get my paint and then because uh, the drier the paint the more um, not the more the less effect the water has so it's less diluted so it's going to come out on your page a little bit thicker a little bit brighter so so yeah, I thought I'd do this quick video on telling you what you need, what supplies you need, and uh, I'm going to do another video <laughs> right after this one on uh, painting. So uh, thanks very much for watching this quick video. It's just to give you an idea of what sort of things you need. Like like I said, you can get the gouache if you want. I tend to, like, like Naples yellow. It's good for highlighting. And then uh, you get you can get your other paints that you can use for the initial stages. But then also a bit of white in that and a bit of yellow. Mix it together. You can, and then then you get an almost gouache. You get a half gouache. <laughs> but yeah, I hope that helps. And uh, it's all about experimentation. Enjoy yourself with your paints experiment with your subjects and once you get used to painting something why not paint something else completely different or just get and become an expert on just painting that <laughs> anyway have fun with your painting like i said just a quick video to help out and now i'm gonna have my coffee and then i'm gonna do another painting so Happy painting, and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye.